All right. How's it going? Everybody good? Yeah. Cool. So, welcome to Newark City. Um, how many of you is your first time here being at Newark City? Great. Cool. Welcome. Um, so, my name is Nate, and I'm going to be doing some basics of uh, WordPress, and I kind of got a few bullet points I'm going to hit. Steve said there's no hard stop time. I'm kind of going for a roughly 40-minute conversation, so I'd like to get through most of the, the topics, stopping for questions, and then if there's a lot of questions on a particular topic, we can always circle back to it. Just to give you some background on who I am and why I'm here talking, uh, is that I actually work for Newark City. Uh, I was up until February of this past year working for Apple um, at the Fifth Avenue store. I was running all the workshops and events uh, at Fifth Avenue. And it's funny that I'm here now in this WordPress uh, event giving a, a presentation because I was in a WordPress event just like you were, uh, are now. And uh, I was thinking about a year ago that I'd like to leave my job and start my own company where I teach people how to do stuff. Um, Aside from just, just Apple products. I have you teach Apple products as well, but you know, doing my own thing basically. So uh, I left, as I mentioned, in February, and I started doing this class called Website Bootcamp for Creative Professionals. I'm actually doing my third one tomorrow night. The idea of that class is a three hour class, so if you can imagine that what I want to talk about roughly fits in between about 45 minutes and an hour, a three hour class that gives you an overview. I'm going to cover some topics, but you might want to think about some of those things. Um, when we're talking about some of these things, so what goes into WordPress might have to relate to server management, might have to relate to knowing something about coding, and I'll try to make it as clear as I can about where to go. My point isn't to sell you classes, but just to give you an idea of where my head is, it's a lot of information to fit in a small span of time, so there might be more things to, to look at down the line. I'm also doing an introductory uh, WordPress class series, it's a four-part series that is going to be going over everything I'm talking about more in depth. There's even more than that can contain, too, if you want to really get into this world of WordPress. So just uh, the idea of this is so that you can walk away with roughly a, a good broad stroke outline of what WordPress is, why you might use it, where you fit in. There's lots of different places that you might fit in, okay? So we're gonna talk about uh, wordpress.com versus wordpress.org. Start there and then move into things like uh, the dashboard. And if you don't know what that is, don't worry, we're gonna talk about it talk about things like themes and plugins, and each one of those, just to give you an idea, is a single class in this four class structure, so you can talk a lot about those things, but hopefully you'll get a little taste of what it is and where to go from there. Um, and then, that's gonna be a lot to talk about, so we're gonna make sure we can kind of stop and take questions and make sure everybody's kind of following along. Sound good? Any questions off the top before we jump into that outline? Yeah? What is your name? Nate. And your site? Oh. My site. Oh, the, 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 the class? Yeah, that's uh, nycwebsitebootcamp.com. Uh, um, but if you want to go to all that stuff, just go to nwc.co. That's this place, and those classes are on that website as well. That's probably a better place to go if you're curious about NWC? nwc.co. Mm -hmm. That's where we're at. I'm teaching those classes that I mentioned, but we have a lot of other classes as well. Yeah. So, um, just to give you an outline of WordPress.com versus WordPress.org, I don't really have, there's not much to show as far as that goes, but um, I do have a slide that I use in my uh, website bootcamp class, which is that slide. Um, and it kind of illustrates a lot of very complicated things in a very you know, overview type slide. So a lot of these things have nothing to do with WordPress, but at least while we're talking, it's something to be up on the screen and maybe you can follow along if you, if you know some of these ideas. But basically, uh, WordPress is an open source project, as Steve mentioned, it's an application. It's a script that runs on a server, okay? And uh, basically, it is written in PHP, if you know what that means, go ahead. Doesn't matter if you don't know what that means, that's okay. But basically, you're going to need to have a host, somebody, a server, right, that, that keeps all your materials and gets it all out to the world, okay? Not just your computer alone. If you want to build a website, you're going to have to have someone else take care of that material. Everybody clear on that part? That's the org. <coughs> Regardless, talking about building a website, you have to have a host. You have to have a server. Regardless of WordPress. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So... <coughs> WordPress is an application that runs on a server. 
Now where it gets really tricky is that WordPress itself is an application that you can install on your own host. If I wanted to set up a website, I don't have to make a WordPress website. I could just build a page in HTML or any number of different technologies, whatever, whatever, buy a host, put it up online, and it's live, right? WordPress is pre-built, so it's going to do a lot of work to help me out to get those things done, even if I don't know a lot of very complex technologies. Now, let's say you're starting from absolute zero, and you want to build a website, you don't have a host yet, you don't know HTML, you don't know any of these languages I'm speaking Greek to you right now, you want to set up your own website. Well, WordPress.com is a place where you can go, which is a hosting service that does have WordPress already going for it. So when you use WordPress.com, let's say you want to set up a blog, you want to set up a website, you don't have to pay anything extra. In fact, it's free to sign up for the WordPress account. You want to get a blog going, you want to get a site going, you don't have to go to GoDaddy, you don't have to go to Bluehost or any one of those other hosting companies. WordPress.com is doing that work for you. When we talk about WordPress.org, that's the foundation for, uh, it's the central place where people go to get access to this application. And it's also where they get documentation. So if I already have a host set up and I want to run it on my own site, I would go to WordPress.org to actually get that software and install it. Um, and I would also go there to find things like plugins and themes. So most of what we're going to be talking about tonight is actually has to do with WordPress.org. Assuming that I am going to be getting my own host, right, setting WordPress up on it. A lot of hosts, by the way, too, have automatic setup, the one-click setup. So you might sign up for a host like GoDaddy and just click a button, it installs it for you, right? That's WordPress.org, roughly, if you want to kind of break them up into categories. That's more of the WordPress.org category versus WordPress.com, which is talking about a self-hosted, uh, or a, not self-hosted, but hosted by WordPress installation. Everybody following so far, that's a lot of complex information, I understand, I understand so yeah. What does get your own host be? So when you want to put a, a site online, you have to get a server, you have to get somebody to, to keep track of that material. So when I say get your host, they're not doing that for free. When you go to GoDaddy or something, they make their money by keeping your materials and putting it out online. So if you want to set up a website and you're uh, starting from scratch, you can go to WordPress.com, they'll take care of that part for you. Or you have to go to GoDaddy, or I feel like I'm advertising with GoDaddy. Anybody? Other names? I know, GoDaddy's a really poor example. Terrible customer. Bluehost, Blue Host, HostData. Host data. So there's lots of different places you can go, and then they might have WordPress install, or you can actually install it as long as it's uh, ready. Buying a URL, like buying a URL. That's a good question. I want to talk about that next. So that's a good question. So that's something else? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, with WordPress, WordPress or, uh, com, you have to have your own domain name before you can uh, publish. With WordPress.com? No. Uh, you can register dot com. Yeah. So with WordPress.com, uh, you sign up for an account and they give you a domain, which is your account name dot WordPress.com. Yeah. Right. So it does that automatically for you. It gives you a domain, but that domain is automatically dot WordPress.com. Okay. So this question of domain is a great question to be thinking about. The domain, for those of you who have no clue what we're talking about, is the name of the site, right? So nate.com or whatever, right? That's, which is not my site, but nate.com, right? That's the domain. That address can be attached to any site. You can attach it to um, WordPress.com. WordPress.com does have an option to do a custom domain. It's not free. You would have to pay for that. Uh, or when you sign up for your own host, then you can register the domain at the same time. Or if you're not ready yet, you can register the domain and then decide on hosting later. If you're worried about that domain getting snatched up, that's a separate process and it's usually much less expensive. Hosting might cost closer to $100 or so a year, whereas the domain registration is very inexpensive. Is that making sense? Everybody following that so far? You guys are Good. That's a really hard concept, so I'm glad that we got through that. Drink the water. So this little diagram is just basically illustrating a kind of a typical workflow uh, for someone running their own WordPress site. So in this scenario, where we said that we uh, have our own host that we set up, Bluehost. Uh, it's just an example. That's the server, that's the host up there. Uh, I have my production machine, which is my computer, where I do all the work to put the site together. Uh, I put this stuff up on the server, and then uh, the client would be the end user, which 
technically it's, you notice there's sort of this area where there, there's bleed over between the client and the production machine because I'm also a client, right? I'm talking to this machine remotely. The reason why I have this diagram in my website bootcamp class is because uh, what WordPress does as a content management system is it attempts to make this uh, a much easier uh, workflow, okay? For those of you, anybody uh, build a website or, or have to use FTP typically or ever have, yeah? of you raising hands. It's, it's not the easiest technology. In fact, it's pretty old technology. So uh, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, that's great because you're coming in where you're living in a world where WordPress kind of takes care of that for you. FTP is kind of, uh, it's still used, it's still necessary. But if you have to manage your own files in terms of, you know, I want to put this photo up on my website. I want to put this page up there. I want to put a link up on my site, right? It's a lot of work. You have to know coding, you have to know file management. WordPress in these other content management systems, what they're doing is taking care of that part for you. And that's really the, the advantage of that. So you might have to decide, um, you know, when you're starting out, what do I do? Do I do WordPress.com or do I do WordPress.org? Okay? And that's a really interesting question to, to start out with. The, the nice thing about um, WordPress.com is that it looks the same. Uh, in a lot of respects, not like this, let me see if I can find my window. So if I go to, do, 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 do. once you're logged in, it's gonna look roughly the same as a self-hosted WordPress site. But where you're gonna run into is a lot of limitations uh, using WordPress.com. And most of those have to do with customization, how far you can go into um, adding things to it, adding functionality, and then also changing uh, the look of the site. So I wanna take you through just some of the basic functionality of uh, a WordPress install, starting from scratch. You just installed it. What does it look like? How do you navigate it? Um, basically, how do you move around in it and how do you use it? Uh, and then we'll talk about some of those more specific customizing options, like themes and plugins. Questions, Mark? Yeah. Um, did, you, did you mention that with the client, you don't need an FTP client to upload a file to the server, you can use the WordPress client to do that? So what I mean when I say it takes the place of FTP is that, let's say that you have a lot of photos you know you're going to be adding to your site, and that's just an example. Okay. You know that every week you're going to add 10 photos. Traditionally, if you don't have some kind of content management system like WordPress, that's a lot of work. You have to keep track of those files. WordPress is going to do a lot of that work for you once it's installed. To get WordPress installed, you might have to do FTP uh, initially. Okay. If you go with a host that has a one-click install, you can avoid it pretty much seamlessly. And that's what we're going to look at next, which is the dashboard and talk about how you actually maneuver through it. Yeah, Kishore? What's this in Ning? 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 Um, it's just, it's a different content management system. I'm not as familiar with Ning. There, there's a lot of content management systems out there. There's WordPress, there's Drupal, uh, there's uh, Joomla. I'm sure you've heard of a lot of them. WordPress is pretty popular for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is, uh, it started out as a blog platform, so if you know you want to do something that has blogs in it, it's really, really strong uh, in its affiliation with a blog, so that's great. Um, the other thing is that it's a lot easier to set up. I've set up. Joomla sites and Drupal sites and WordPress sites and the installation. And uh, I'm intentionally avoiding this because I don't want to uh, go down the route of uh, walking you through an installation process, but um, just because it can vary for everybody. Uh, so I could show you one way to do it and then one step is missing and you totally don't know what I'm talking about. So uh, I just want to show you that it's part of their documentation. WordPress um, has oh, a critical criticism of it, okay. Uh, five minute installation. Oh, he's talking about why he doesn't use it. I use the five minute install. Um, did it work for you? So, I mean, take that as you will. Um, but roughly speaking, I'd say on, on the whole, 90% of the people I know who use it work fine.